Welcome to This Week in High School Sports. I'm Teresa Whipple. Steve, we have, before we do anything else, the food on this table <laughs> is driving me crazy. It is what? Hey, guess what? Our sponsor, it's still Red Onion Burgers in Mount Lake Terrace. Yes, it is. And oh. we talked to Sean right before the show started, said, uh, can you send some stuff our way? And uh, here's what we have. So we brought oh some potato gosh. skins. Very nice. We're going to oh. eat up here in a minute and maybe share with some of our guests today. Yeah. We also have hungry have, athletes on the set. We so. do. And we have a New York dog also, which has a little bit of everything on it. So uh, yeah. again, hot dogs. Potato skins, hamburgers, shakes, salad, soups, whatever you need, they've got it. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean wanted me to remind everybody that it is National Burger Day this Saturday. So oh, who knew? Come on in and get a burger. Okay. And uh, soon, uh, coming soon, new menu for Red Onion Burgers, so stay tuned for that. Okay, very good. Well, so next we are going to talk about Edmonds Woodway making soccer history making soccer history in a big way. The Edmonds Woodway Warriors, who have been to the state tournament before, in fact, they were just there last year. By the way, that was their first time in 13 years when they made it last year, or 12 years, I guess, but who's counting, right? Uh, made it to the state tournament last year. They had never gotten past the first round of state. Uh, they had lofty goals this year to get to that second round, which would be the quarterfinals. And uh, not only did they do that this week with a nice two to one victory over Auburn Riverside, they then turned around on Friday night and defeated Garfield 4-0, which moves them into the semifinals. So yes, Edmonds Woodway is one of the final four teams left in the state of Washington. They're going to be playing for a, a chance to win the state championship possibly this weekend. Friday, they will be playing at Sparks Stadium in Puyallup. It's a 4 o'clock start. If they win that game, they get to return to Sparks at 3 o'clock the next day to try to win the state championship. And uh, rather than tell you about uh, what happened in those games, we, uh, we brought a couple of the players in tonight to uh, discuss not only what's uh, transpired over the last week, but uh, what's going to happen moving forward, and just talk uh, to talk Edmonds Woodway soccer in general. So without further ado, here are two of the Warrior soccer players. So as we just mentioned, history made this week for Edmonds Woodway. Their boys soccer team into the semifinals for the first time in school history. And with us right now, two of those players who made it happen. We've got the goalkeeper, Greg Luzinski. We also have Kyle Ari, who plays a little bit of the midfield and a little bit up front, right, at the forward position. Yes, sir. Uh, guys, congratulations. Uh, a big deal for you guys. Uh, this yep. team has been to state before. Uh, varsity was there last year. You got knocked out in the first round, so it was kind of a goal this year to make it, uh, make it past the first round, wasn't it, Kyle? Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely a goal. It was like our main goal was to get past the first round, you know, make that record, do something, you know, make history. So. And you make it indeed. That's exactly what you guys did. And just looking over at some of the numbers, uh, before last year you hadn't been to state since 2003. You won district last week by beating Glacier Peak. That was the first time you'd done that since 2002. Uh, again, uh, you guys are kind of putting yourselves on the map. And Greg, I know in that game, uh, that two nil game over Glacier Peak, that was a Glacier Peak team that beat you earlier that year. Glacier Peak team that had won like 14 games in a row. Uh, first of all, you had a great game that day. I know your coach uh, was praising you in the media afterwards. Tell me about that game a little bit. Uh, yeah, at the beginning we started started off well, passing the ball, keeping it simple. Got the first goal, and then Kyle secured the secured the win with his two goals. Uh, it was a great victory. I did pretty decent, uh, and uh, yeah. So you're saying this guy did pretty good too, then, right? Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Kyle. What, uh, what um, what's his game like? Uh, he likes to juke people a lot. <laughs> Like to do fancy moves, but it works sometimes. And um, some uh, like last goal he got versus Garfield uh, was over like your back or something. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a fancy goal. Yeah. <laughs> so you got you got the trick goals then, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Trick goals. Yeah. Now, uh, what about this guy here over here? What's the what's the goalkeeper like for you guys? What's Greg oh, meant to the team this year? Um, great hands, big kick, uh, positions well, and communicates with the team for sure. Like he doesn't, he doesn't really. His flaws are usually very little to none. So well, that's uh, that goes a long ways. Then, hey, I got to ask you about the two games this past week. The games that have gotten you to the semifinals. First of all, you're playing Auburn Riverside the other day, uh, nil nil at halftime. Auburn Riverside comes out and takes the one nil lead early in the second half. First of all, tell me a little bit about what happened moving forward in that game, and then also uh, maybe you guys can talk a little bit about the fact that. You guys tend to be a little bit of a second half team this year. I noticed you're either behind or tied at halftime. And you seem to come back and win. Maybe we'll start off with that, Kyle. What are you guys doing at halftime that's changing the complexion of the games in the second half? Well, um, 
some of us think it, it might just be Carly's uh, pep talks at halftime because, you know, she really gets into those pep talks and we come back and usually stronger and better. It's it's kind of, it sounds a little ridiculous, but... Yeah, it's tra tradition now. <laughs> it's been working for you guys, then. okay. <laughs> and now then the second game, you, you defeated Garfield 4-0. Uh, again, that was a, uh, well, I guess, first 26 minutes in, it was 0-0. And then uh, you uh, you went out there and got the team out ahead. Tell me about that goal. Yeah, um, it was, I forget who crossed it in, but someone crossed it in. Their outside back uh, jumped up to get in, missed it. And I tried saving it by, like, running after it toward the, close to the line. It was probably two feet off. And I just kind of flicked it over with my right foot. And it somehow went over the goalkeeper and just bounced in pretty much. <laughs> by the time he caught it, it was already... Late, so. then, yeah. then they added a few goals after that. Greg, you guys have had 11 shutouts this year. I know you've been a vital part yeah. of all of those. I know you were splitting some time early in the season, but the last seven or eight matches you've been playing pretty much 80 minutes plus. <clears throat> um, for a goalkeeper, what does it mean for you to have guys up front there that are getting those goals in and giving you a little bit of a cushion? Uh, yeah, it feels nice when they get their goals. Uh, first, like if it's a 0-0 zero -zero game, uh, it's like they put more pressure on me and... Uh, it's not, it's not good. So yeah, getting few goals in uh, makes me feel really confident about uh, winning the game. The other thing I noticed about last week too is you guys had six goals total in those two matchups between Auburn, Auburn Riverside and Garfield. Five different players scoring, and Kyle, you being one of them. Mm -hmm. I've got to think that it, it's pretty tough on your opponents when they really can't just scout out one or two of you. On any given night, there's six or seven of you that can go off for goals, right? Yeah, it's it's uh, we're like a very balanced team in that sense because we don't have anybody that's like standout scores, you know, a million goals in one game, and there's nobody that just doesn't score because everyone has the capability of scoring. It's it's nice. It's really it's comfortable. It feels comfortable when you're playing. Sure. Yeah. Now I did have a chance to talk to your uh, one of your coaches, Carly Mackey, who you mentioned a minute <coughs> ago. There, mm -hmm. she was saying that uh, you guys tend to put a lot of goals on paper, and one of your goals this year obviously was to get past that first round. Said it's a very goal-oriented team. No, no pun intended with soccer, obviously. Uh, you guys are going into the semifinals now. This was you've already kind of exceeded all the goals. Have you kind of had to recalibrate here and set new goals? And obviously, a lot on the line as it is. You really don't need much more incentive, right? But have you guys sat down and talked a little bit about what you need to do this week and what the goals are um not for this week no but we have we sat down before the garfield game and set a goal for that game like to be one and oh after that game so we could you know continue on yeah and we we'll take each game by uh, each step by uh, one one game by one game yeah now interesting greg you played basketball this year yeah. basketball team that also went to the playoffs mm -hmm. when you guys played oday you're able to look at video you're able to scout basketball players a little bit easier with huddle and mm -hmm. youtube and things like that Soccer, you guys don't really have that luxury. Your semifinal game is against a very tough Mercer Island team on Friday night. Uh, what do you guys know about them, or if anything? Are, have you been able to scout them at all? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know about Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, my club coach just told me they had two really fast forwards and a composed midfield. That's all I heard. So the goalie better be ready then, huh? Yeah. yeah. I just got to get ready, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. So, again, they play 4 p.m. Spark Stadium down in Puyallup. It's the semifinal game against Mercer Island. If you win, which we're hoping they do, state championship game will be at 3 o'clock on Saturday, also at Sparks. Uh, that would be, what, Inner Lake or Lakeside playing on the other side of the bracket, right? Yeah. And if you guys end up losing the semifinal game, you still play at 10 a.m. the next morning yeah. for the third place game. Uh, obviously, you, you take a trophy either way, but that first place one sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. That's the goal. <laughs> So again, uh, these guys will be playing a big matchup on Friday night. We're hoping they play two this week. Kyle, Ari, thank you very much. Yeah, Greg Lazinski, appreciate it. Thank you. Best of luck to you guys, and uh, hopefully by this time next week, we're talking about the Warriors with a state championship. How exciting for Greg and Kyle and the rest of the team to actually make that historic journey to state, and uh, let's hope that they come away with a victory. Yeah, once you get down to the Final Four teams, anything can happen. It's uh, it's two wins away from a, a state championship. Well, even if they don't go uh, to the finals, it's still a great accomplishment. I know they probably don't think that, but I think it's amazing. But at the same time, I think they do in the sense that they did write down their goals at the beginning of the season, and the main goal they had was to win a, a game in the state playoffs, and they've already done that twice now. So yeah. anything else is it's a little bit extra, but uh, yeah, when you get this close, you want the title, too. Should mention also we had a couple pictures that we needed to put up and that we didn't get to during the interview. In other words, Steve forgot. 
In other words, Steve did forget. Yeah. Uh, three pictures, as a matter of fact. Uh, here's one picture that we want to put up right now. That's the, uh, the team celebrating after the Garfield victory, and why not? And by the way, Garfield, state runner-up last year, so that was a big game. Also have a picture of Greg playing, uh, playing goalie right there, mm -hmm. kicking the ball away. And then we have also have a picture of Kyle in action. Uh, I believe that picture was in one of the games last week during the, uh, the state tournament as well. So, yeah. uh, again, thank you, Greg and Kyle, for coming on down. And we certainly wish the Warriors all the best. Yes, we do. And uh, we also have some athletes going to track and field championships this week. We do. District championships were this past weekend. And district combines the West Coast 3A South and the North. So you have 13 different schools. Most of the events, the, uh, the top three finishers go to state. Uh, we're not going to read all two dozen of the athletes who are qualified for state in our school district, but we will mention some of the athletes that actually won their events outright. On the, uh, the boys' side, uh, Sterling Mahan, who we met from Edmonds Woodway last week, he won the 400. Uh, Grant Whitcutt, who we've also had on the show, he won the pole vault, so congratulations to those two guys. And then on the girls' side, we had a, a few multiple winners. Uh, Jordan Edwards won the 200 and the 400. Michaela Pivik won the 1600 and the javelin. Uh, Shanae Okoronkwo, a big surprise here, right? She won all three events. She won the pole vaults, the long jump, and the triple jump. Uh, keep in mind, Shanae is the defending state champion in all three of those events. And uh, we also just found out that uh, she actually set a state record in the pole vaults uh, the other day at that event. So nice job for Shanae. Uh, Yukino Parle from Edmonds Woodway uh, won the 3200. Jessica Ahn from Mount Lake Terrace won the 800. And then the Linwood uh, girls relay teams in the 4x200 and the 4x400 also came away victorious. So a lot of winning going on on the girls' side of things at that tournament. And, oh, by the way, the Linwood girls, they won the team championship at the districts for the first time in 25 years. And that's a nice segue for us because their coach, Dwayne Lewis, uh, came in earlier with Harris Cuddock, who is a discus and a uh, shot putter for Linwood. And we had a conversation with them about how the season's gone and uh, what to expect at the state tournament next week. Here's that interview. And the state championships in track and field are coming up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday down at Mount Tahoma High School in Tacoma. And these two gentlemen here will be a big part of that. Both will be heavily involved. Dwayne Lewis, the head coach for Linwood High School, who's uh, been at it for quite some time. And Harris Cuddock, who has qualified in both the discus and the shot put, both from Linwood High School. Coach, first of all, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a picture to put up uh, of you right off the bat here. This happened a few weeks ago. That is you receiving an award from your, uh, your athletic director, Rob McMains, as well as uh, the principal at Linwood, David Golden. That's for 50 years of service in track and field. 5-0. How does that, uh, how, how, where does the time go? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, uh, it shocks me, too. You know, I, it was always, well, maybe next year I'll, I'll retire, and it just keeps adding on like this. And uh, uh, I think I might have one more year, I think, in, 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 in uh, track and field, at least in the district here. And then, uh, then it's time to... I think, retire and spend a little more time with the grandkids. Now, we should point out, not all 50 of those years at Linwood, correct? But the majority of them are. Yeah, 45 at Linwood, five uh, prior to that at Edmonds Junior. So it's been 50 years in the Edmonds School District. You know, we talked to quite a few coaches, both uh, while broadcasting sporting events and during shows like this. And there seems to be a threshold. A lot of coaches, after 10 or 15 years, get a little bit burnt out or they need some time away. What is it about track and field and Linwood High School that keeps you coming back every year? Well, I, th I think one is is when I taught for 35 years and working with young people, I think is 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 really the key. Uh, and I, I think I do, or at least I did uh, miss teaching, you know, for for several years. And uh, this was one way of continued teaching and working with young people. One of those young people is sitting right next to you. This is uh, Harris Cuddock. Harris uh, second in districts the other day in both the shot put and the discus. And uh, Harris, I got to ask you, uh, what's it like uh, working with this guy here? What's uh, Coach Lewis been like for you? Oh, well, he, he's the he's the kind of coach that knows a lot about everything, you know. And uh, he'll constantly be coming around, checking up, making making sure you're doing the right thing. Uh, I'll, I'll hear him yelling, "Arms, arms, arms!" Like go track, go uh, track practice. And uh, you know, he just feels good to know that there's a coach out there that. Uh, it's like keeping up on everybody. So he can be on one end of yeah. the field, you're throwing on another, and he's still seeing things yeah. probably, right? Yeah, especially that one screen. That <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> now, now, Coach, I'm going to ask you again. Uh, Harris is having a nice season here, only a junior. Uh, we just mentioned in uh, districts last week, finished second in both events. 
Tell me a little bit about this young man and what it's like coaching him and uh, what some of his strengths are. Well, he's, first of all, an, an excellent young, young person. Uh, you know, I can count on him, uh, you know, to be doing what he's supposed to be doing. And um, the, the other thing, too, is, is he's, he's always trying to improve. And uh, he's very explosive. Uh, we've had you know bigger, stronger kids that, that can't throw nearly as far, and I think a lot of it's his explosiveness. And now he's working, uh, I think, a little bit more on on uh, some of his form. And I think between the two uh, areas there, you know, he's he's got a, a, a long way even yet to improve. Now Harris, I've got to ask you. We've uh, we've seen you out on the football field over the last couple of years. You're a very impressive football player as well, all league. Uh, Obviously, doing two events here that are, are somewhat strength oriented, but a lot of it's technique as well, right? Uh, tell me a little bit about these two events. Uh, how much of it is strength? How much of it is technique? Why don't we start off with your best event, which is the discus? I know you're uh, you've currently got the third longest throw in the state this year. What is it about that particular event that uh, that appeals to you and that makes you uh, so good at what you're doing? Well, when I first started track, I thought it was all about strength, you know, but coming into it, learning form and that kind of stuff it improved my marks by a, a lot you know substantial amount so between shot put and discus you know there's there's no really there's no strength involved in it it's just all about how well you can execute your positions you know have that perfect form to throw and now your furthest throw is what this year 165 too and what would your what would your ideal throw be at the state tournament this weekend 170. Coach, I uh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but isn't 170? That would be at this point right now that could win yeah, state, right? Yeah, yeah, that 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 could very easily take the title. It, it, there's an inconsistency in the discus, I think, maybe a lot more than you find in the shot. Uh, shot putters tend to you know put the shot uh, relatively uh, in, in similar distances. But every now and then, if you get the form right and everything goes right with the discus. Uh, you, you, you all of a sudden get one that may pop another 10, 15 feet. And then the, the biggest problem with that is then you, the next time you pick up the discus, you think you can throw it farther by trying harder, and then uh, certain things in your form break down. And we've got to show some of that form here, too. We actually have a picture to put up of Harris right here. There you are. I believe you're throwing the discus right there. It's not quite 170 right there, but no. it's, it's getting there, right? Yeah. And now I've got to ask you guys, too, a little bit about uh, not only what, what Harris is doing, but your, uh, the girls' side of things. Uh, incredible year for the, the Royals. I know you actually won the district championship as a team last week. First time in 25 years, Coach? Yeah. Uh, yeah we, what a special group to, to be coaching. Yeah, it, uh, it was kind of uh, also interesting. My, my uh, distance coach, uh, Stephanie, well, Stephanie Molnack, back when she uh, competed for me, was... Uh, the team captain the last time the girls won the uh, the, the district title, and so I, I, I think it was sweet for her, you know, to be part of of this team also. But uh, yeah, it's been a long time in between. We we used to have, uh, uh, I, I think, the last time when we had a streak like that. I think we won it four years in a row. Unfortunately, uh, the 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 bulk of our point getters are graduating this year with uh, Michaela. Pivik and, and Jordan Edwards, whom I'm sure most of you, if you follow basketball <laughs> in the area, are well aware of the, the, those two girls as far as their athletic abilities. They've done okay with their careers at Linwood yeah, so far. Right, right. Harris, what's it like for you as a, uh, a teammate of theirs, really? I mean, the, the boys maybe not as, as a team accumulating quite as many points as the girls. Is there a friendly rivalry between the two? Do they do both sides encourage each other? What's that been like as, uh, as teammates? Uh, for me, it's been like just trying to beat them, kind of. So, like, you know, the girls kind of get more of the, the fame, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the boys are doing their part. And it, I, I'm just trying to improve my marks. That's all I'm trying to do. Sure. Now, and Harris isn't the only one that has a chance to win state championships this week individually. Obviously, we mentioned Jordan, uh, Michaela, and a few others who have already won state championships in some cases. Coach, the girls finished third in points last year as a team at the tournament. Uh, chances of maybe winning one this year, and I guess the other question for me to you is, it, it's a little bit different than in other sports in that uh, so many different events are going on at the same time simultaneously. Uh, you, as a coach of a team that might have a chance at a state title, are you keeping track of those points in your head? Are you are you writing them down, or do you just wait until everything kind of 
filters itself out at the end. Well, that's that's what young assistant coaches are for. <laughs> but yeah, Turn to we, work, huh? yeah, we've got we've got my sprint coach, and I think he's already trying to figure out you know whether whether we've got a shot at, at the at the title. And now, uh, Kamiakin, I believe, has won it. Uh, their girls have won it like five years in a row, so uh, they're pretty tough to unseat. But uh, uh, I guess our girls did beat Kamiakin in basketball at, at mm -hmm. the state tournament this year, so maybe maybe that's a, a foreshadowing of maybe what we can do down there. But, so we will, uh, and we know that Kamiakin's going to be there, so yep. certainly we'll, uh, we'll see both of those yep. teams. So again, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you, uh, you both will be down there all three days. I would assume that uh, hotels for the athletes, or do they travel back and forth each day? Uh, well, with the traffic between here and Tacoma, you, you, you better have them down there. <laughs> or sure. You know, and, and we've seen situations where people didn't do that, and they, they missed their events. And, you know, you've worked all year for that, and, and to be sitting in traffic while your event's going on is, is not pleasant at all. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have, a, have motels down there, to, you know, through the, through the three days. Sure, and we hope yeah. at the end of the third day uh, there's a lot of celebrating, not only for individual state championships, but uh, perhaps a team win as well. So, uh, guys, uh, best of luck to you down there. Harris, thank you for coming on today. Thank you. For Co me. Yeah. Coach, it would be special to get one on your 50th year, huh? So, uh, oh, yeah. Good luck yeah. to you and, and the team down there, and we will uh, look forward to seeing how Linwood does. And hopefully at this time next week we're also talking about maybe a, an individual state championship here and uh, maybe a few others as well as a team one. So stay tuned. I have just two things to say. I want to be in as good a shape as Dwayne Lewis is when I have been at, on the job for 50 years. And I uh, want to be as, in as good a shape as Dwayne Lewis at my age. Well, that yeah, right that, that too. It's yeah, pretty... he's amazing. And just amazing. Um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, we watched Harris consume the red onion burgers hot dog and he did it in about two minutes flat so sean richards just so you know it was well received and he did give us a good thumbs up too sean yes, so he did. enjoyed the dog definitely. okay all right so uh now we have to talk about baseball and softball yeah baseball a quick conversation there was only one team left going into the week and this was the state tournament uh but nice job by linwood though they got a victory over central kitsap in their first game that took them into the quarterfinals for the state so again this is single elimination and then they lost a 3-2 to two heartbreaker against Southridge. So they were one run away, or two runs, I guess, if you will, from making it to the semifinals and playing into next week. But, uh, again, a great season for the Linwood Royals. I know they've overcome some injuries this year and some other things. Uh, we've gotten a chance to know some of their players and uh, certainly congratulate them on what was a very successful season. Yes, yes, we do. Okay, and softball. Softball, a district tournament uh, this past week. And uh, what can you say? Uh, two of our teams came very close to making it to the state tournament. Just coming up a bit short, uh, Edmonds Woodway and Mount Lake Terrace playing in separate games. One went away from making it in, and uh, Mount Lake Terrace in particular losing a heartbreaker to Glacier Peak, 8-7. to seven. I've got to talk a little bit about one of the games, though, even though it didn't end up factoring into who made it to state. Uh, Edmonds Woodway, in game number two of the tournament, so this was in the consolation bracket, they played Arlington in a loser-out game. So the winner was going to get to play two days later and continue to try to make it to the state. Loser was going home. Mariah Woolery from Edmonds Woodaway, I don't think I've ever seen an athlete have as many highs and lows in about a 15-minute period as she did. Uh, they went into the seventh inning with a 5-3 deficit, and she was the pitcher for, uh, for Edmonds Woodway that day as well. Edmonds Woodway is three outs away from having their season end. They end up one strike away. It was 5-4 to four at one point with a runner on second base. Uh, one of their players gets a base hit, drives in the tying run. It's 5-5. Five to five. Mariah steps to the plate. She hits her first ever home run in a softball game. So she gives her team a 7-5 to five lead. And now she's only three outs away on the mound from wrapping this game up and sending them to the next round. And all of a sudden, uh, she kind of falls apart on the mound. She walks five consecutive batters, walks in the tying run. Arlington tying, or winning run on third base. Bases loaded, nobody out. Uh, they decide to make a pitching change, so they send Mariah out to play in left field. The very next ball is hit into left field. It drops in front of her on the ground. Runner on third base. All they have to do is score to win. Mariah comes up firing to the plate. Uh, Jackie Lovelace, the catcher, great catch at the plate, but Mariah with an outstanding throw. There's one away. The very next batter, Mariah catches it in left field for out number two. Runner tries to tag from third. She guns her down at the plate, so she's accountable for all three outs from left field. And then in the top of the eighth inning, in extra innings, Mariah comes up and then hits another home run, a three-run homer, sends Edmonds Woodway on to the, uh, the next game. Unfortunately, they lost the, the following game to Marysville Pilchuck, but really 
Mariah Woolery uh, gets a lot of kudos in my mind for just sticking with it and having herself an outstanding game even through the, uh, the pitching adversity that she went through in the seventh inning. Yeah, that's incredible. That's, what a story. It was a huge story. It was yeah. a great story. A lot of fun to watch. So Mariah, nothing to be ashamed of there. Great way to end a game. And then, of course, the Middledale Mavericks, the, uh, maybe yeah. the top team in the state right now. They were on fire at districts. They, uh, they won their first two games against teams that they had lost to earlier in the season, beat them 12-0 each. It was Oak Harbor, who they uh, scored seven runs in the first inning, and then it was Marysville Pilchuck, a team that has been putting up double-digit runs all season long. And uh, Lauren Dent, the pitcher for Meadowdale, was phenomenal. Uh, she threw two one-hit shutouts in those, both of those games. Uh, they get, get a lot of help from some of her players in the field, a lot of great hitting. And then they go and they take care of business in the district championship game, uh, defeating an Everett team that had beaten them in the championship game the year before, beating them rather handily in that championship game. It was 15-1 to last year. Mm -hmm. This time, Meadowdale turns around and gets the 8-1 to victory. So they win the district championship. They advance to the state tournament. Uh, they finished third in the state tournament twice in the last three years, going to state for the fifth straight year. So we brought a couple of those players in. So uh, Emma Helm, Caitlin Webster, both coming into the, uh, the studio tonight. We had a great interview with them. Here's the interview. As we just mentioned, the Meadowdale Mavericks are heading back to the state tournament in softball, fifth year in a row. And with us right now, two of the main players on that team, Emma Helm and Caitlin Webster, are joining us right now. First of all, ladies, congratulations on uh, not only are you going to state, you just won the district championship. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now, you, uh, you defeated an Everett team the other day, 8-1 to one in the championship game. An Everett team that, I uh, hate to bring up a bad memory, but they did beat you in the championship game last year, and, and they beat you 15-1. to one. Caitlin, <laughs> that had to feel pretty good to get redemption on that game, didn't it? Um, yeah, it did. Um, you know, also, we just brought a new kind of focus and stuff to the tournament this year. Um, our goal all along the year has been to win the district championship. And um, this year, the pieces just kind of fell in place. And, um, you know, I thought that that was one of our best games of the season. And Emma, I've got to say, for, as far as a non-state championship game, that might have been one of the bigger softball crowds I've ever seen. There were a lot of folks out there to watch uh, both Everett and Meadowdale. It had to be fun and exciting for you as a softball player to see the crowd out there like that. Yeah, I mean, usually, like, we don't get that many fans. But this year, we've gotten a lot of support just because of how well we've been doing the past few years, so it was really cool to see that many people. I wasn't really expecting it, so we really appreciated it. That. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask about the two games leading up to the state or the district championship game. Uh, I guess we're calling it the uh, the redemption bracket, if you will. I think it's something that maybe Coach Hopkins talks about more than the players. But uh, <laughs> when the uh, when the bracket came out last week for districts, you had Oak Harbor in the first round, a team that beat you earlier in the regular season. You then had. Mount Lake Terrace playing Marysville Pilchuck on the other side of the bracket. Two teams that beat you. So you knew if you beat Oak Harbor, you'd play one of those teams. And then the possibility of playing Everett again, the team that beat you in the district championship last, uh, last year. For a team that doesn't lose very often, it had to be kind of exciting to know that you might get a chance to get some revenge on these teams. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that just that whole week at practice, we were really focusing on, you know, what could have we could have done better in those other games. Um, and I think we really applied it in those games. Um, and also just it kind of, you know, motivated us and we like to come out as strong as we possibly can for those games because we know those teams could beat us. Yeah, I know you put a lot of runs on the board in each of those games. It was 12-0, 12-0, I think. And uh, the Oak Harbor game, you scored seven in the first inning. You really made sure you put that one away. Uh, it's a lot easier for a team, too, when your pitcher is, uh, is throwing the way that Lauren Dent has been playing lately. Uh, she threw a one-hitter against Oak Harbor. Uh, I think she was two outs away from having her fourth no-hitter of the year. And then she turned around and uh, shut out a Marysville Pilchuck team that had just scored 18 runs against Mount Lake Terrace about an hour earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, you were able to catch all three of those games, and she only gave up one run to, to Everett in the championship game. Emma, what is it like uh, catching Lauren right now? What is she doing that's just making her that much better than everybody else? I don't, I don't know. She just came in this year, like, and I think she was just ready to go. She knew her job, and she just, like, been so clutch for us because we kind of needed that I think and I mean it helps when we can back her up and she just gets the confidence that she can go out and do anything and she does and makes us happy. <laughs> now I've got to ask you both about your uh, your own playing skills a little. Emma it seems like every time I look in the paper or look online if you don't have a home run every game it's pretty darn close sometimes and Caitlin you uh, you had what home runs in both of the Marysville Pilchuck and Oak Harbor games the other day 
and uh, you get your share as well. So I want to ask you guys a little bit. First, we're going to put up a picture. I think we've got a picture of Emma from uh, not, uh, not too long ago. So, Caitlin, I'm going to start with you. Tell me a little bit about what makes Emma Helm a great softball player. Well, Emma is um, a very strong softball player, both both physically and mentally. Um, you know, I've never seen a high school softball player hit balls as far as Emma has. Um, and also, you know, she brings a mental toughness to our team that um, just, you know, pushes us to be better every day. And so she's just a very strong player all around. And then we've got a picture of you also, so we need to put that up. That's you, I think, bunting in the uh, during the district playoffs the other day. Uh, Emma, tell me a little bit about Caitlin's game and what makes her a valuable teammate. Um, Caitlin's just such a strong outfielder, and she's so fast, and um, she's also one of our leadoff batters, so that's really like helpful because I have the confidence that she can get on base all the time, and she does, and a home run sometimes is great. So, um, yeah. I'm not going to let either one of you go before we talk a little bit about college. You're, uh, you're not going to be done playing after you're done with Meadowdale. I know uh, you have a year left, Emma, but Caitlin, you're moving on next year. You've already decided to go to UPS. That's the uh, University of Puget Sound. Uh, what was it that uh, went into that decision and why UPS? Um, I decided to go to UPS just because it's a great school um, academically, and I really pushed myself in high school to um, be to where I need to be to go into a great academic school, and so I feel like I'm ready for that. And also, um, I just really you know, wanted an opportunity to play softball after high school, and that was an opportunity that I was really fortunate to have, and I really like um, Coach Tate and um, all of the girls that are going to be my teammates next year, and it just it feels like a perfect fit. And Emma, you're not going too far down the road. You're going to go play for Coach Tarr at the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, why the Huskies? Um, I've been around Husky softball for a long time, and I've been able to like work with the coaches and stuff. So um, when I like got the opportunity to check it out, it just seemed like the perfect fit for me, and I couldn't be more excited to go there. Well, there you go. And first and foremost, they're going to go down to the state tournament in Lacey this weekend. There's 16 teams down there. Single elimination to uh, to win the state championship, so you can't lose a game to get state. You got you've taken third two of the last three years. Uh, I'm going to put up a picture here really quick, and this is a picture of you guys winning the district championship last week. What is it going to take to get you to hold up another trophy down in Lacey? What uh, what does this team need to do in order to uh, to get that state title this year? Um, we just have to keep playing our game. We've been hitting really well so far this season, um, with the, the exception of a few games. So we just kind of need to stay. Um, with our game, you know, um, our pitchers right now are throwing great. So if they can continue to do that, um, it really gives our defense a good shot to, you know, get easy outs and um, overall just compile good games. And I think I don't have the number in front of me. I'm doing this off the top of my head, but I over 10 home runs last year at the tournament, I think. Was it 10 or 12 or somewhere in there? Uh, maybe a few more of those games and uh, yeah. maybe a title as well, right? That, that couldn't hurt. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to let them go. But first uh, and foremost, they're going to go and play in the state tournament. Again, that's Friday and Saturday down at Lacey, Soft, softball state championships, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking next week about the Mavericks with a state title. Emma Helm, thank you very much. Thank you. Caitlin Webster. Thank you. Good luck, ladies, and uh, go Mavericks. Well, I think we can expect some great things from the Mavericks at the state tournament, and those young ladies are so poised and talented. I, uh, they have a lot going for them for the future. They are indeed. They're also very experienced, which is going to play a, a go a long ways for them going into that tournament. You've got Emma, who has been starting since her freshman year. Caitlin has played varsity for all four years. And there are other girls on that team as well that have been there for multiple years. And uh, when you have that much experience, not only playing as a team, but also playing at the state tournament level, it can go a long ways once you get down to Lacey. That's right. Um, and now we are going to talk about the other sports that we haven't talked about yet, golf and tennis, right? Yeah, golf. Uh, Morgan Rood, go figure, right? Uh, Morgan <laughs> is the, uh, the young golfer from Sun Meadowdale. Nuts. Yeah, we, uh, we brought Morgan in uh, a few weeks ago and talked to her a little bit about her golf game. Uh, she's pretty good at golf. Uh, yeah. She won the district championship the other day by 10 strokes. Wow. This is a tournament that features 13 schools in the area all of your top golfers, and she wins by 10 strokes. So a nice job by uh, for Morgan. Her teammate, Hannah Peterson, also from Meadowdale, uh, also qualifying for the state tournament. Frances Monahan from Edmonds Woodway finished third at the districts, and Catherine Schalk from Edmonds Woodway finished ninth. Therefore, the two of them also qualify for state. And that state tournament will be taking place on Tuesday and Wednesday this week at Indian Canyon Golf Course over in Spokane. 
And want to mention the boys as well. The, uh, the boys had three different uh, golfers from the area, from the district, who also qualified for state. Uh, Mikey Jensen who had the highest Edmonds School District finish at the district tournament. He finished third. Uh, Colin Strobeck from Edmonds Woodway finished fifth. And Rui Nakagawa from Linwood finished eighth. So all three of them are also heading to Spokane. Same city as the girls, but different golf course. They'll be participating in the state tournament at the Qualchan Golf Course uh, and that is also on Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Well, good representation from the district. Sounds like all the schools have somebody in there somewhere. It, which is great. Yeah, we uh -huh. like to see a lot of participation yes, from all do. four schools. And uh, what about tennis? Tennis. Uh, Tina Liu, who we talked a little bit about last week. We not only talked about her, we had her in studio. Tina was trying to qualify for state in tennis for the fourth consecutive year. Now, mind you, the other three years she qualified as a doubles uh, competition uh, competitor. This year, she was trying to make it on her own as a singles player, and we mentioned she had some tough competition to go through. Well, congratulations. Tina finished second in the district tournament. That qualifies her for the state tournament. So she will be over at uh, Kamayakin High School in Kennewick starting on Friday. She's in the final round of 16. I think her first matchup is against a, uh, a young lady from Shadle Park High School over on the east side of the state. So she'll be uh, partaking in that tournament. And then also uh, from the boys' side, uh, we, we tend to forget about the boys a little bit because yeah. the boys' tennis teams in the Edmonds School District and in Wesco, they participate in tennis in the fall. But the state tournament is in the spring, so Jeremy Ansdell from Mount Lake Terrace, also qualifying back in the fall, he'll be taking part in the boys' state competition, which is also taking place over in Kennewick. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to take on a young man from Auburn High School in the first round. So we will see how Tina and Jeremy do at the state tournament. Okay, well, we'll have a lot of news to report next week with uh, maybe some state champions, and uh, we hope you will join us next week for that. Have a great week, everybody.